Hello, I'm Diego. Uh, I'm going to be refuting Michael Sanchez's uh, speech. Uh, his main claim was the war on drugs has a negative impact on the United States. And his uh, secondary claim were the war on drugs only perpetuates the cycle of drug use, the war on drugs wastes a high amount of money, and the war on drugs damages U.S. prisons and law enforcement systems. His first claim, um, the claim that the war on drugs perpetuates the cycle of drug use is false. According to a study in 2013 by Nationwide Trends on Drug Facts, the use of illicit drugs besides marijuana has stabilized over the last decade. If it were true that it is perpetuated, that the cycle perpetuates drug use, as the speaker claimed, it would have increased yearly, but this is not the case whatsoever. Nationwide Trends later in the article also claims now that drug use is stabilized other forms of prevention based on, based on science, compassion, health, and human rights. And now it can be taken into effect more extensively since it's state rules. Both red and blue states across the country have reduced their jail populations by giving alternatives for low-level drug offenses in recent years. Over time, the war on drugs has made people realize that it is not worth it to risk their lives in future doing drugs because it has stabilized over time. That is why it is called the war on drugs instead of the battle on drugs. Drug use was not going to drop overnight, nor did anyone expect it to. Uh, response to a secondary claim, while it is true that the war on drugs has spent a lot of money, like the supporting, the second supporting claim of his speech says, this is to be expected of when going against such a large global trade. The speaker claims the global drug trade is worth more than $320 billion. It is obvious that the war against something so large is going to cost a large amount of money as well. The money spent now against this trade over time will be made back by increasing the productivity and more and more citizens each year and eventually there will be minimal amount there will be a very minimal amount of money needed to stop the drug trade. Uh, the claim that it is costing a lot of money is not relevant at all to the issue at hand. It is like claiming the study and research of cancer costs too much yearly so we should stop funding it. The money spent now on preventing and possibly curing cancer will eventually bring more money in by saving millions of lives over time. It is the same case in talking about the war on drugs. For his third claim, uh, it is said that the war on drugs uh, is damaging the U.S. prison and law enforcement systems by claiming that drug users were the most incarcerated people in the jail system. The point of jail and law enforcement systems is to incarcerate people who break the law. His point is only relevant in proving that the country has cracked down on most, hev most heavily on drug use, which is the point of the war on drugs anyway. Also, the claim was made that of the 2.3 million people incarcerated, half of them were because of drugs, but it clearly states in his bibli bibliography that the source he got it from claims differently. Richard Branson from C CNN says, of the 2.3 million behind bars, a little more than half a million were because of drug violations instead of half of the entire population, like he said. The speaker more than doubled the number of people it really was, whether it was a mistake or done purposely. Uh, this, in my opinion, is enough to see him as incredulous. Uh, to conclude, the war on drugs in the earlier years has been very costly and may seem as ineffective but in more recent years has seen a much more positive effect on society as to be expected from the war. The earliest years are the ugly ones, but then it turns in the favor of one side and the middle as seen in the war on drugs. I've given examples on how recent years we are at the turning point of this war and there will be positive effects in the long run for the United States. Thank you. I heard you laugh. Did you swim? No. Someone who isn't me? Someone who isn't me? Yeah. It was fun. How would you pass my All right, structurally, everything's easy to follow. On the first point, you've got a nice counterclaim here suggesting that the use of drugs has been stabilized. Uh, 
Stability, I'm not exactly sure, shows a long-term success. I think you could show, for instance, that there are always variations in uh, the level of usage, and it goes up and down. And if it's stabilized at the moment, if there was a trend toward it going down, that would be more helpful. Uh, the one thing that you did point out is that it's except for marijuana, and I do think that there might be an explanation as to why that is the case, uh, since uh, the laws on that have changed dramatically in the last 20 years. So there could, in fact, be uh, a reason that uh, drug use is up because of society's failure to condemn it accurately. I think that might be an interesting way to develop a counterclaim on that particular point. Um, on the uh, total cost of the war on drugs, I think you put it into reasonable perspective. You're diminishing the significance of the argument by pointing out that you know the drug trade is worth $320 billion. Um, I don't remember that the advocate cited a specific figure for how much we spend annually. I didn't see you that you that you cited a specific figure, but uh, you know if it's 20 to 50 billion dollars a year, the way to point that out is say, look, that's less than you know 15 uh, percent of what the drug trade is making. Plus, we do a whole bunch of other things with that material, so or with that money. So it might very well be worthwhile in the long run. I think that's a good argument. It just needs to be developed a little bit more. On the uh, third point, I, you know, I, you know, I don't think you want to point liar, liar, pants on fire, but uh, I see that there does appear to be a misunderstanding in the way the evidence is presented, and you did a good job explaining that, that it's, over, it's slightly over half a million, not half of the 2.3 million that is cited there, which suggests that the advocate has really got twice as many people incarcerated for drug use as are actually incarcerated for drug use, actually a little bit more than uh, twice as many. So uh, I think that that's a good way to diminish that argument, but I think there are other arguments to be made here as well. For instance, the people who do, who are uh, drug users or have violated drug laws and they're the ones in prison, they, my guess is that they're probably not casual users for the most part, but they are, in fact, uh, people who have made an economic uh, decision to distribute drugs, and that's why they've ended up in jail, not because some guy's getting high on the weekends. And I think you could put that into context a little bit more. Uh, there's way too much reading in the presentation, and there's way too much reading in the audience, by the way. I noticed a few people have their cell phones and devices out, and that's not really appropriate. Your classmates are working hard trying to do this, so please make sure to give them appropriate attention when they're giving their presentations, please. Thank you.